one of the oldest inhabited regions in the world. Sacred words pass on ancient wisdom through generations. Our traditions go back more than 5,000 years. India's Vedas, a wellspring of India's culture. Music and dance. Dere na, dere na, dere na. Art and archaeology. Yoga, medicine and mathematics. This is India, the land of timeless culture. India, the cradle of some of the world's oldest surviving traditions. When I see our culture traveling around the world and on to the global stages, I must say, I feel very proud because culture is soft power. Young India is reinventing timeless traditions celebrating lesser-known cultures from the farthest corners of the country. Kashmir is travelling to the rest of India through Vitasta. At Kartavyapat, Kalanjali brings to focus folk and tribal cultures from across India. It's a beautiful one family Vasudeva Kutumbakam and that's what we still enjoy that's the spirit with which we live in India. India has now got the world doing the Natu Natu. <laughs> the root of India's unique beats and moves the 1st century BCE, the Natya Shastras, the world's oldest treatise on the performing arts. Anything beautiful is attributed to divinity in our culture. That is why it, it has a stamp of permanence. Our dances, music, sculpture, painting, Everything is integrated. Yeah. India's music and dance diversity spans cultures. Each emotion, each occasion, finds expression. India has more than 200 different classical and folk dance forms across the country. Two major classical schools of music and countless folk forms. India's melodies are one of the longest unbroken records of any cultural tradition in the world. The Nati Shastras are universally applicable. In fact, all are classical and folk forms. And that is why it is as valid today as it was in the time of Bharat Muni. It's why we have audiences the world over appreciating our dances on the global stage. Right now, we are performing our music on some of the most prominent venues and stages across the world. And we are performing in Hindi, in Kannada, in Sanskrit, and so many other Indian languages. And a diverse audience enjoys our music and celebrates it. Today, we are able to push the boundaries of genres, mix musical forms so much more than ever before. <laughs> All set to take the world by storm. Another hot trend, the turmeric latte. 
but Indian grandmothers have used recipes for holistic health since time immemorial. They say yoga has been around for thousands of years. Now it's an $80 billion industry. Ayurveda, the oldest surviving medical system in the world. Today, India is emerging as a global wellness hub. The worldwide Ayurvedic market is growing by 12% each year. By 2028, it's going to be worth more than $16 billion. But did you know, plastic surgery was also pioneered in India. The 6th century, Varanasi. Sushrit invents and writes the first treatise on what is now a global market worth billions. It all began with a rhinoplasty. Chopping off the nose was a common form of punishment at that time. They would become social outcasts and looked down upon by the local population. Sushrutas, rhinoplasties, the nose restoration surgeries didn't just give them a new face, new hope, but allowed them to reintegrate into the society and live with dignity. Sushrit didn't just invent a procedure. He designed 60 therapies for different kinds of wounds. 121 surgical instruments, many that look so similar to today's. 300 surgical procedures, all outlined meticulously in Sushrut Samhita. As a plastic surgeon myself, it literally gives me goosebumps that Sushruta was doing all of this in 600 BCE. His surgeries ranged from rhinoplasties to complex cataract surgeries. 600 BCE the Sulba Sutras, arguably one of the oldest geometry textbooks in existence. Ancient Indians may have known the Pythagoras theorem well before Pythagoras. In fact, there are evidences of practical mathematics from the excavation of Mohanjodaro and Harappa. But the classical period, 400 to 1200 AD, is called the golden age of mathematics in India change the face of mathematics for the whole world. 1831, Surveyor General of India, Sir George Everest, began building his team to map the Indian subcontinent. He found the 18-year-old Radhanath Sikdar. His greatest invention was accurately accounting for refraction, the bending of straight lines because of the Earth's atmosphere. 1852, Sigdar triangulates peak 15's height based on his own working formulae. Turns out it's the tallest mountain in the world, now called Mount Everest. Today, we have advanced space technology GNSS data that can be used to map positioning down to centimeter. In Radhanath Sikdar's times, there was a 459 kilogram bulky theodolite that simply provided raw observations for the tools he had. He, his work was simply path breaking. Ancient India's genius is being discovered anew through the unique initiative Dhara, an ode to Indian knowledge systems. Ancient India's relics are also on their way back to their rightful owners. A new cultural renaissance is underway. India's monuments and forts are also coming to life again. One thousand twenty-six CE, Bhima I of the Chalukya dynasty reigns. A temple is dedicated to the sun. In the Sanctum Sanctorum fall the very first rays of the sun on the equinoxes. Steadfastly, 
through the centuries. A precise calculation of the equinoxes, two never-changing days in a year, making this an eternal marvel. India has three such sun temples. Modera is the oldest surviving sun temple in India. It is really a testament to ancient India's appreciation and understanding of nature. Modera Sun Temple has 52 pillars, showing the passage of 52 weeks, 12 Adityas, representing 12 months and 12 steps of Surya Namaskar. A few centuries pass. The Vijayanagar Empire rises. At its heart, the Vittala Temple, revered as an incarnation of the Lord Vishnu. An ancient temple that seems to sing in celebration. 56 granite musical pillars sing the Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dhani and Sa. Perforated granite typically has a structure of larger crystals within a matrix of smaller crystals, which could also contribute to intrinsic resonant qualities. And it also has a content of certain minerals and crystalline structure, which also accounts for the metallic sounding tonalities. Columns cut, etched and designed like string instruments. When tapped, they all echo together. The music they make, they say, is as varied as 81 different instruments. And it's this which makes the musical pillars a very unique acoustic marvel. Every day, new discoveries of ancient India's futuristic marvels and mysteries come to light. Every day, India's timeless culture travels to new stages across the world. Everyone brings in their own individuality and this is what makes our classical musical tradition so dynamic, so exciting, so ever-changing and evolving. The wheels of time carry on in India, the land of timeless culture.